So in video one of this series, we spoke about how the echo loading system is based on moments and moments are based on forces around a rotational point. And just like if you use a longer spinner and apply a one kilo force, as you double the length, the force goes up. So with loading the aircraft, the further you load these items from the point that we're measuring, which is either the center of gravity or the datum, the more effect they have. So when it comes to our center of gravity, which needs to fit in this range between the, between the aft limit and the forward limit, there's two very, very important uh, acronyms that you need to know for your calculations. One is TOW and the other is ZFW, which stands for takeoff weight and your zero fuel weight. Now your takeoff weight is the weight as you take off the ground or your estimated weight as you take off the ground. Your zero fuel weight is the weight of this aircraft with no more fuel left in it. So in other words, as you fly, your packages, unless you're dropping them and things like that, that's a totally different situation. But generally your packages and your people and your aircraft weight of just the aircraft alone isn't going to change. But what is going to change is the weight of the fuel you have on board. And in some cases that's going to change very, very significantly. Now these are the what we call the main tanks and they are the auxiliary tanks. And the main tank should be used for taxi, for startup, for takeoff, for climb and descent. As soon as you've finished your climb and you're in cruise mode, any fuel that's in the auxiliary tank should be, it should be switched to the auxiliary tanks and the auxiliary tanks should be used first of all. Then once they're exhausted, then you would go to the main tanks. So in other words, other than your taxi takeoff, startup and climb, you should then burn from your auxiliary tanks first. Now the effect that's going to have on your weight and balance means that initially you're going to be burning from this tank, but it isn't going to be too much. So initially you're going to lose weight at the front of the aircraft, weight that is in front of your center of gravity, which means it's going to start to make the aircraft a little bit nose light or a little bit tail heavy, but it shouldn't be significant. Then as you start to burn the auxiliary tanks in your cruise mode, you're going to lose weight from behind the aft limit, which means that it's going to start to move, make the tail lighter and the nose heavier. But because it's very, very close there, it's not going to be a massively significant amount. But here's the really crucial thing you need to understand about takeoff weight and zero fuel weight. Once you calculate what your weight is at takeoff and you calculate what your weight of your aircraft will be with zero fuel left in it, then the center of gravity absolutely must for the whole time that that aircraft is in the air, between takeoff and landing, the center of gravity must fall in front of that blue line and behind that red line for the, for the weight that it's going to be. So in other words, the center of gravity must be between zero fuel weight and takeoff weight for the entire flight. If it wasn't, here's what would happen. As you take off, if your nose was too heavy, you wouldn't have enough force to lift that, you know, to, to lift the back of the plane up like it should to climb. Or if you took off and the tail was way too heavy, the plane would want to sit like that and you may well go into a stall situation and you may well not have enough elevator authority to get the nose uh, back down. Or you might exceed the structural limitation of that. So you need to make sure that as the, that it's when you take off, you're within balance and that later in the flight, as this fuel back here has burned off, that you don't become too nose heavy. Okay, so you've got to calculate that out. And here they are for you. Here's the numbers that you need to fit within. So here's the, uh, the maximum zero fuel weight, okay, and the maximum takeoff weight. These are given to you in the ECHO system, in the CPL, PPL performance, uh, sorry, workbook. And then here's your, so it must fit between these weights. And then the center of gravity range in millimeters must fit between these numbers for those weights. And, and you've also got to pay very close attention to these two limits here. So in other words, if you calculated out the maximum zero fuel weight to be say 2,500, then that is below that, that's fine. And then here, what we need to look at is at 2,500, it would fit into this category. So if you calculated the center of gravity at zero fuel weight to be say at 2600 millimeters, then 
it's within it's within the maximum and it's within the range so we would know that the zero fuel weight was fine then you'd calculate out what your maximum takeoff is weight is going to be and as long as it comes in under 2950 that part is okay then at 2950 or just under say at 2900 it must also uh, fit between 29 uh, 25 60 millimeters and 26 80 millimeters and if both of those two check out then you're okay in terms of the echo loading system there are other things you need to check in some aircraft for example uh, landing gear might have a, a structural limitation on gravel or it might have a structural limitation on rough grass and things like that and whatever the num lowest number comes out but for the purpose of your CASA exams this is what we need to focus on is just these numbers here